Toxic Release and Dispersion Model, the introduction. Toxic Release and Dispersion Model require a release model. So actually there are three steps in utilizing a toxic release model. Okay, the first one is the design basis. Then you need to develop a source model before you can use a dispersion model. Basically, you already cover about the uh, design basis and also a source model with uh, Dr. Azam. Okay, so now we will try to uh, look into what is a dispersion model and how to develop and use this dispersion model for our toxic release estimation. As a revision, for design basis, uh, actually the de uh, design basis describes the various scenario uh, leading to a toxic release. So it, uh, it looks for what can go wrong with that particular design. Then the most toxic release studies strive to determine the largest practical release and also the largest potential release. So, in other words, our design basis or our uh, dispersion model uh, is to determine, or our objective is to determine the largest practical release and also the largest potential release uh, as a worst case scenario. Okay, we try to uh, discover what is the worst case scenario for that particular incident. Okay, this is how the toxic uh, release model help us to prevent the scenario from going to worse. So the complete design basis actually will describe what is uh, what went wrong with that particular plan or particular equipment. Then the state of the toxic material release is either solid, liquid or vapor and also the mechanism of release okay how that gas or the toxic is released okay is it by a ruptured pipe is it by a hole in storage vessel and so on so how big this rupture pipe how big uh, how, what is the diameter for the hole in the storage vessel and so on will be covered during our uh, toxic release estimation okay so for now this is the, the gist of what is design basis about okay what is design basis about then we look with uh, to what is the source model okay so the second part is source model you already covered with the Taza. source model is uh, what is the purpose of the source model the first one we try uh, to cover or we try to understand what is the form of material release okay you can uh, you have to determine what is the form of the material release is it by solid liquid or vapor so for this case for toxic release uh, dispersion usually is in the form of vapor okay however toxic release can be in other form like solid and liquid and will be covered during your advanced safety con uh, safety engineering then there is a total quantity of material release uh, what is the quantity of the material release during that incident and also the rate of uh, at which it is released okay so for the release okay for the source or the release model you need to understand what is their form is it solid liquid or vapor what is their quantity and also what is the rate of release Okay, because all this information will be used during our development of uh, gas dispersion model. Okay, this is the required quantitative dispersion model to study about. Okay, so this is dispersion models. Okay, what we'll cover. Okay, what is dispersion model? Okay, dispersion model is a model that we can help to describe how the airborne transport and how the distribution of toxic materials away from the accident site into the plant and community okay the main important thing is how we can predict okay how we can predict and how uh, it can be described when the toxic release material 
is happen. Okay, when this incident happen, we try to estimate where is it, uh, where this gas go. Okay, because this is our concern. Okay, a community. Okay, remember your is a uh, case study incident about Bhopal and so on. Okay, what happen when your plant is situated very uh what we call it okay very near in in a community okay that's what happen if you don't have your dispersion model then why it happen okay why we need this uh, dispersion model okay we need this uh, gas uh, toxic gas and dispersion model to determine the consequences okay this uh, to determine the consequences from that incident so for airborne toxic or a gas toxic okay toxic gas if the main transportation is by using wind okay so there are two types of airborne toxic okay one what we call as a plume and another one is a puff okay so basically we will cover what is plume and also what is puff dispersion model both of these uh, plum and puff dispersion model have a same requirement okay among them are the historical weather data of the area then the topography of the area what is the emission sources of the pollutants and also a downstream receptor okay these are the requirement for us to predict using our dispersion model after this, we will look further what is the uh, what is called as a plum model and what is puff model. So this is the plum characteristic. Okay, it is it is a steady state concentration of material release from a continuous sources. So plum is basically direct. Uh, we can relate it to a continuous sources as you can see when there is a hole in your storage vessel a continuous release will make it as a plum characteristic okay you will uh, you we will look what is plum characteristic and what is puff characteristic hand to hand so a characteristic plum formed by a continuous release of material where this is puff characteristic you can see there there is a big difference between puff characteristic and also plum characteristic okay so basically uh, this is the real situation where the continuous release of gases from a smoke stick or a chimney okay so this is the shapes of plum characteristic okay okay Another example, uh, okay. This is uh, the another example of uh, dispersion release. Okay, this is another example of plume release. Okay, as compared to puff characteristic, okay, puff release is a quasi instantaneous and short term release. Okay, it's temporal concentration of material release from a single release on a fixed amount of material. What is mean by a fixed amount? Because it's just a puff, okay? Instantaneous release of material. Only that quantity of material has been released as compared to the continuous one. So this is the instantaneous release of material, okay? So puff formed by a near instantaneous release of material. So the amount of release is fixed. Whereas for continuous release, the amount is based on your release rate. Okay, remember your plum will have your release rate. Okay, whereas your puff characteristic is based on amount of material. Okay, so this is the plum and the puff model. Okay, as you can see, in a plum model, basically is a continuous release of the puff gas. Okay, this is puff 
model. Basically, for a plume, it consists of a continuous release of the puff model. Okay. So, there are technical division on whether a puff model or plum model is more appropriate for a particular application. So, this is a table, a guideline, okay, to select between a plum or a puff model. So, is it a plum or puff model? It's based on what is your application and what is their situation. Because the plum and puff model, uh, the selection of a plum or puff model will determine what kind or what type of uh, dispersion model that you will develop. Okay, but in the next video, I will uh, explain to you what is the parameters that affect this atmospheric dispersion model. Okay, until now, this is only an introduction of what is this special model is about it's uh, just uh, as a recap it is only uh, be, uh, between plum and a puff model okay you uh, you just need to you can to uh, you can determine whether it is a plum model or a puff model